Partners in Ministry, a presentation of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation, dedicated to growing ministry support networks, introducing people to a cause that connects with their heart, bringing hope and encouragement to our communities as we seek together to serve as Christ served. Welcome to Partners in Ministry. My name is Dan Smith, and today I'll be talking with Steve Warmer. Steve is the Executive Director of Hurt to Hope in Nashville, Tennessee. In today's interview, we're going to learn about Hurt to Hope and explore ways you can connect with their ministry. Well, welcome, Steve, and thanks for joining me. Hey, Dan, it's an honor to be with you today. Thank you. Hey, to get things started, why don't you give us a brief history of Hurt to Hope, how you got started and, and, and why it is what it is today? Hurt to Hope uh, was started approximately 25 years ago. I was not anywhere near involved with it at that point. I became involved about seven years ago. Um, but it was, uh, the, the ministry was born out of a tragic accident. Um, maybe if we have time, I can get into that a little bit. But uh, yeah, that was that was in the late 90s. It became a official nonprofit organization a couple of years later. And uh, here we are, you know, 25 plus years later, still trying to expand it and get more exposure for it. Sure, sure. Um, what journey has God taken you on then to prepare you to be the executive director? I think typical of God, he's working on multiple fronts at the same time. Uh, I, I, you know, I have a lot of, um, like a lot of people, unprocessed emotions that I had in my life, um, abandonment. Uh, from my biological father being one of the big ones. And I think I was trying to figure out uh, how to fill that hole with a lot of other things. And mm -hmm. certainly um, young men do that and it doesn't go so well. And we know that that's, that, that hole was created for God. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I found God, not that he was lost, I always say, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was right there the whole time. Uh, but, um, that was, that was almost 20 years ago, but I still had some unprocessed emotions. What I always say about, um, becoming a Christian, you know, we, we participate in the death, resurrection and the burial and resurrection of Jesus through the waters of baptism. Uh, but when we go into that water, there's a lot of baggage that still comes up out of the water with us. Mm. And I was no different. And so I had some things I needed to unpack. And um, it was it was really in 2017 when I learned about this organization and their teachings that I had some aha moments. These are some some things that I was missing and some ways to process those emotions in a healthy way. And uh, I, I just once I saw it for myself and how much it benefited me. I, just like anything else, right? You can't help but keep it to yourself and want to see others uh, find the gift that you have. Sure, yeah. So it sounds to me like, once again, God's using uh, your past experiences to help prepare you to both relate as well as to connect with the people that you're serving today. Absolutely. And and I think the other thing, that was my personal um, piece of it was was going through it in 2017, but also as as a minister of the gospel, I encounter people all the time that have uh, you know a plethora of hurts, you know sure. unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, depression, grief, um, you know just people needing a healthy outlet to be able to process these th process these things, and so I see um, the the program being able to help ministers. And being able to help their congregations as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what or who are you serving today? What group of people are you are you reaching out to? Well, we're in a major transition. Our our two founders, um, who have been involved the whole time, the twenty five years that I alluded to, um, they are literally handing the nonprofit over to my wife and I. Such a such a gift. Um, and so there's there's a transition in terms of how we do our workshops. That's our bread and butter um, product, if you will, is our ministry is is workshops and they're 10 hours in duration, uh, very flexible. But we usually do them on a Friday night and a Saturday uh, for most of the day. 
And that can be done in person, which we've certainly done that in, in you know, Nashville, the home base, but it's been done in several cities in the U.S. and actually in, a, in seven or eight countries also uh, over those 25 years. Um, but now that my wife and I are going to be more involved, we're still going to be um, leading our church in the Memphis, Tennessee area. Uh, but we're also looking to expand into more congregations that feel like they need it and, and more ministers. So we have our first ministers workshop uh, ever for, for an entire group of ministers in Illinois uh, scheduled for April 2024, which sounds a long, long way away, but it, it'll be 2024 here in just a couple of weeks. So as crazy as that sounds. Yeah, the way it's going now, that's for sure. It is flying by. Tell me. So it's not necessarily a ministry to the general public per se, as much as it is to people that are either members or are attending a certain church, as well as their leadership and our pastoral staff. Well, it has been open to the general public. What, what we typically have done is we've scheduled five or six workshops um, throughout the year, and then we just trust God to bring them to us. We'll, we'll put it on our website, and then you we never know how many people are going to sign up. It could be three. It could be 30. We're, we're not overly concerned with the number other than wanting to help as many as God wants us to help. Uh, but because of the transition, we are focused on some specific groups of people. But like if I, if I had, if I had the group of people that wanted to go through it, um, you know, in, in, in a few weeks, I would definitely uh, make that happen. But there, there's some specifics that, that you know, you don't have time to get into it on this interview about the transition that that are just slowing down from us being able to do the workshop the traditional way, which is the general public. Sure, sure. And, and how how do you cover the cost of putting on these workshops? We do charge. We we typically charge one hundred and forty nine dollars for the workshop, and that that covers the time um, of the. Um, Teachers, it usually takes five to seven people uh, to facilitate a workshop, and that includes an AV person, especially if we do it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we have had therapists tell us that $149, uh, we've had a therapist tell us that went through it, that that's equivalent to, um, the, the, like, the value you get for going through it is equivalent to weekly counseling for six months. And we, bo we both know that the dollar amount, if we put that to it, is a lot more than $149. Right, right, yeah. So what kind of transformations are you seeing in the lives of those that you're serving? Well, I'll tell you, I tell you, I can tell you a couple real quick off the top of my head. Um, obviously, I won't get into any names to protect, you know, for right. confidentiality reasons, but we had a, a, a young um, man in Illinois go through it. And he he was living in um, another state at the time he was telling me this story and telling the group his story. But he showed us his back, which had belt belt welts. Try to say that 20 times in a row, belt welts, um, <laughs> all over his back from the beatings that his dad gave him. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's hard to even describe that. Um, but then... His grandmother, his dad's mother, was living in the house with him. And sometimes his father would purposely starve both of them. And, and without getting into the details, they couldn't leave the house. And so there wasn't a way out. And they had to kind of deal with the situation. So he was looking for, this is several years later, he was looking for forgive, you know, a way to forgive his sure. father for all this. And he ended up doing a testimony uh, for us that was just so moving at how far he had moved in his heart to forgive his father of those beatings and neglect and abuse. Uh, it was remarkable. And then I had another, I had another guy that his his father had done horrific things to him. His, his father had passed away several years ago, um, but had, had left mental abuse on him a physical, um, let's just say a physical consequence that he still lives with to this day, even though his father's been gone for years. And he would say to me, and I was, I was his minister and we, we would go out to coffee or whatnot. 
and he would bring up these stories about his dad. And of course, I'm hearing these stories for the first time, you know, and I'm just like trying to listen with compassion to him. Um, and he's like, Steve, I will never, ever, ever forgive my father. Mm. And he's telling me the specifics of this, which you know, I'm not going to go into now, but it was horrific abuse, uh, physical and mental. And I'm just listening to him. We go out to coffee every two weeks and he he re, you know, regurgitate the story and, and maybe add on a little more to it. And I'm listening to this and just trying to pray with him and listen to him. And I'm like, you know, at some point I have to call him to forgiveness as his as his pastor, right? But I'd have to be really delicate in how I do that. So I was praying about how to do that. And then we were starting to do workshops uh, in a small group setting. We were doing them in our home. And I invited him to come to one of them. And he's like, I, I'll, I'll never forgive my dad. I don't see what good it'll do. I convinced him, you know, eventually to, to come. And he's he's sitting in my house like this in, in my in my you know recliner. And there's a you know five or six other people going through it with him. And we got done with that class. I think we did, I think we did it like four nights out of seven nights. And um I was having coffee with him about a month later and we were talking about it and he didn't bring anything up about his dad. And I said, Hey, you know, that situation with your dad, how you doing with your forgiveness? He said, Oh, just as light as a feather. He said, Steve, I've forgotten about all that. I mean, it's forgiven. It's gone. I did that at your house about the third night when that, and I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and I, and I think the lesson I learned out of that is we can draw a line in the sand about forgiveness and and this gentleman had done that like i will never ever forgive well if that's where you're at you're probably right you won't but if we say god this situation really stinks and it hurts and i'm i'm confessing to you right now it hurts like nothing else i've ever felt before and i know how much you've forgiven me i know i need to forgive here i'm just really having trouble putting it into practice. I don't know how, but I want to. There's a different heart there. And God will work with that heart that says, I, I just don't know how, but I want to. He'll get you there. And he got both of these gentlemen there. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And there's so much of that going on these days. Um, my wife's a third grade teacher, and it's just amazing to hear some of the stories for the kids. And then you get to talk with the parents and the parents are just they just grew up in the same thing when when they were kids, and it just it just seems to be uh, unending. I mean, the what you're doing is just so important, so important. Well, I tell you, Dan, it's 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 a gift and it's an honor to be able to help when people are sharing their stories with us. We we really equate it to in that moment we're standing on holy ground. They're, they're sharing with us some of the most intimate parts of their life, sometimes communicating it for the first time mm. outside of the immediate family. And, you know, you can do a lot of damage if you say the wrong thing or say anything at all. Sometimes we just need to be good listeners and empathize. Right. So if for us, it's like it's it's standing on holy ground. It really is. Yeah. If one of our listeners out there uh, is really connecting with what's going on here and says, man, that's the kind of ministry I really want to support. Well, what are some ways that they could get involved with Hurt to Hope? Yeah, it's a, it's a great time to get involved with Hurt to Hope. I would encourage uh, your listeners to go to our website, first of all, www, lowercase, the word hurt, the number two, then the word hope. So that's hurttohope.org. Uh, we have all kinds of um, testimonies on there. Our YouTube, YouTube channel's embedded in there. Um, we've got ways you can give there. Um, you can you can see um, our workshop in Illinois is going to be on there. Um, but even if they just wanted to um, inquire with questions uh, of me and just want to know how they can get involved, because we are creating uh, very soon an online uh, version prayerfully an online version so distance doesn't have to keep you from attending a workshop you can do it at your own pace from the comfort of your own home uh, that's that's 90 percent a done deal but they can also email me at steve 
dot warmer. So that's Steve dot W O R M E R Steve dot warmer at hurt to hope dot org. If they have any further questions. Super. Great. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time today. That's been great information and just really excited about uh, what God's calling you to do. Thank you so much, Dan, for letting me share. It's been great. Hey, if you're out there and you've got some questions, or if you'd like to learn more about Hurt to Hope, you can see their contact information here on the screen. You can also find it in the show notes for this episode on our website or in the description of this YouTube video. On behalf of Hurt to Hope, Steve Warmer and Partners of Ministry, I want to thank you for joining us today. But until next time, let's get out there and serve as Christ serves. This has been a presentation of Partners in Ministry, a podcast of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation. To learn more and see the show notes for this and other episodes, visit our website. To stay informed of up and coming broadcasts, subscribe to our e-newsletter. To invest in our mission, donate today.